Uh, I would say it begins with prayer. Um, uh, what I tell, um, I, I told um, Sudhir's wife, she's a teacher. I asked her, Sudhir, uh, Premlata, uh, what is your ministry? I have no ministry. What do you do? I'm a teacher. I said, oh, you've got eight hours. You are in the school and you can have a ministry. How do I do that? So I said, all you do is to start and pray with the teachers. You know the lives of teachers. And when the teachers share certain burden with you, you just start praying with them. The next time they come back, another teacher will come back. So when you have more than two or three teachers, you say, let's pray today for us for three of our needs. And then it'll start. Then you start sharing little by little about the Great Commission. Now, the prayer group that I have here, Ratna, uh, when she comes to me, Victor will teach her some topic. I say to Daddy, I have a lot of things to pray for. So after one hour, she'll say, you can give me at least 10 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> so this lady will sit for 15 minutes and uncle will teach her something. So she goes and goes and teaches her prayer group. So now this prayer group becomes a uh, um, uh, center of a spreading Great Commission teaching. And, uh, and she's a teacher. She testifies to a Hindu teachers. She says, I've got a lot of disciples um, in my class. They accept Jesus Christ. They say, ma'am, we cannot baptize now, but once we become 18, we will. So she says, I follow up all my ex-students who follow Jesus. I follow all my teachers. And she's forever sharing Christ with everybody. So it begins with praying. You understand that? It begins very small. Then it becomes spread, becomes big. Now, uh, for those of our master trainers who, who, who went and um, to a certain village, they found, um, they found a friend or a relative. They usually go to a relative. Because relatives is like an oikos. It's a group who will welcome you. They'll not only welcome you, they'll listen to you, and they'll provide you food, they'll provide you a place to stay. So this is how we started with our workers. We said, you go to your relatives wherever they are and share your testimony with them. And they said, uncle, it is so nice to share my testimony because I was such an awful person, uh, especially men. The women were not so awful, you know, <laughs> were drinking or beating wives and gambling and not working. You know, it was usually, usually the men. And they said, when they see my changed life, they say, we want you, God. Then we say, I'll pray for you. You have somebody who is sick and then they start praying and they see healing taking place so quickly. And they say, we want you, God. They say, so many of these people say, we have Usha machine. Usha is a brand name of a sewing machine. We haven't heard of Ishu Masi. <laughs> Usha machine and Ishu Masi. And Ishu, Usha machine and Ishu Masi. We haven't heard of this. What machine is this? <laughs> it's not a machine, it's a living person. And so they began to share. And for women, this was easy because they would go to a, a, a home and they would go straight to a kitchen. The man will have to sit outside. The women go straight into a kitchen or to a backyard where the woman is trying to clean her um, grains or she's working with animal. They will stand or sit or talk with them and uh, making friends. And in a few minutes, the woman will tell her problems and they'll pray for her. And then she'll say, shall I bring my husband to your house? She says, yes. So then the husband will come next time. And the, then they will have a meeting in the evening in their house like that. So women became uh, people who opened the doors for husbands uh, to start a, a prayer group or a um, gathering of people. So I would say the women were great facilitator in that sense of the word. And uh, they helped open a door in a village in the home of a person who became a man or a woman of peace. In our case, it became a woman of peace. And I have um, many of these went, as I told you, they went through the oikos, but then slowly they prayer walked. And the, the, way, the way they prayer walked is so amazing. In the villages, the women don't have toilets. So around four or five in the morning, a group of women will take their a bottle of water <laughs> and find they'll go 
um, to toilet. So I said to them, when we go to toilet, you start praying for people living on the right or the left hand. And how do we pray? Pray simple prayer, let your kingdom come in their midst. A simple prayer, we taught them very, very simple prayer. Um, uh, uh, there's somebody who is opposing you, say this person who is opposing, he, he is a BJP member or RSS member or Bajrang Dal member, pray that Father, we pray Lord that he'll come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we began teaching them to uh, use this early hour of the morning going. And then another time these women go is to fill water. You know, they, sometimes the hand pump is about a kilometer away or half a kilometer away or two blocks away. So they take this pot, they have to take the empty pot and fill it up and bring it. Two pots at a time, one on the head, one on the side of their hand. And as they go and come, they began praying for people. And soon uh, they, they found that there was a lot of change in these people. First of all, these very people they were praying began to seek these women out and say, so-and-so is sick in my house, or somebody is sick in my family. Can I bring it to your house? Yes, yes, please bring him to my house in the evening. And they would always meet. After they prepared an evening meal, they would sit outside their house around seven o'clock. You know, there's a little surrounding area. They clean it in, in my in villages. They clean it with a, a cow dung a paste. They make it nice and smooth and they all sit there. Then one family, two family, three families, they come, they begin talking, sharing testimony and uh, each one telling uh, such and such a thing happened to me. My husband was beating me. You told me to pray and I prayed and now he stopped drinking. And many stories began coming. So this uh, person who, who was uh, uh, anti-Christian first would bring his brother or a mother or somebody and they would pray. And right in front of their house, they would be healed. And so uh, then, uh, and these women are so passionate, they don't mind saying that uh, since you are a sinner, you have to ask God to forgive you. You see, for me to say to a Christian person, you are a sinner, would be very difficult. You understand that? But these women just are not abashed about it. They would say to that person, you see, I can only pray for you if you ask God, if you repent and ask God to forgive you. And because uh, if I pray for you and you don't repent, then she may not be healed. Uh, 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 no miracle will take place like that. They're just so forthright about things. I love them. And so uh, that's how it is that they take them through repentance, they pray, and signs and wonders follow.